You're listening to Finding Careers End Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I am joined again today by Ricky Baez, who I asked to come back for a little Q&A today. Ricky, how are you? I'm doing good, Pete. Enjoying the day. How about you? You're, you're, joy, you're enjoying the day, and uh, it's it's a beautiful day here in, in Florida after um, a devastating hurricane we just came through. So we're on the other side of that now with um, you know being fortunate and um, uh, where a lot of others were not. And uh, it's been a, it's been a weird week, but we're we're back to business. That's right. We're back to business. Uh, you know, there's some people in uh, Southwest and West Florida that really, really have suffered through the storm. Others were lucky. Others were so were not so lucky. And my hearts go out to everybody who's still in, in the recovery efforts, which is not going to look they're not going to see any kind of normalcy for a long, long time. So this is the time to uh, be that neighborly neighbor and help out if you can. Uh, but my uh, my uh, uh, thoughts and hearts are with them today. So we um, we always ask for questions. We we do get them. Uh, we uh, every once in a while uh, we like them whenever they come in uh, because we 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 want candidates to be able to uh, ask open questions that we'll be able to give an honest answer to. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple today that we wanted to address. Why I asked you to come back on? I like keep you keeping me honest as an HR professional, which I am not, um, mm -hmm. although. When it comes to working with recruiters, I think um, you know that is something. Needless to say, I'm I'm, I'm comfortable yep. answering. And both of these questions today were aimed at recruiters, so uh, okay. I thought that would be an interesting uh, show today. So you, you ready to uh, to tackle a couple of these? I'm ready to go. I got my coffee. All right. Shoot. The first one is, how do I stand out to a recruiter? That was it. That's what that's what they asked. That's what. Um, there's a lot of different ways to interpret that, but. Um, but what, what do you think, Ricky? As a candidate, how do I stand out to a recruiter? Oh, stand out. I see you stand out. up. Like like a recruiter was being a bully that took your lunch money and now you're gonna square off with them. That That's would not what you mean. that would that would be a bad, a bad relationship with a recruiter. <laughs> <Really would. laughs> we, don't, we don't want that. So look, um okay, so a recruiter, <laughs> it would be nice to think, Pete, that a recruiter when a requisition opens up, right, they got like 20, 30 minutes to review each resume to make sure that's the right one. And that's not realistic, right? A recruiter normally has about 500 resumes and maybe nine seconds to decide on each resume if they need to go forward. How do you stand out, right? Here's how you do it. The same reason you don't go shopping at the supermarket while you're hungry and the same reason you do not ever go shopping for a car when you need one, right? Because you have a different thought process. So you start building relationship with the recruiter when you don't need a job. That's how you stand out. And here's how you do it, candidates. When you go out on LinkedIn, you see some recruiters that are really active on LinkedIn, right? Whatever they post, engage in those posts. Whatever whatever they do on there, start engaging with that author. Start, you know, take them out to lunch. No agenda, just for the for, for, for the full reason to get to know that recruiter. Once you start building a relationship with that recruiter, what's going to end up happening is you're, they, they are, you're always going to be in the back of their mind when a position comes up that meets your qualification. They're going to go, oh, my God, I know Pete. Let me go ahead and connect with Pete before going through the stack of 500 resumes. So my advice is start building a relationship with a recruiter on LinkedIn or, or anywhere else before a job is needed. I mean, that to me, that's the best thing you can do. So to clarify, uh, are you referring to a third party recruiter from a staffing company or a corporate recruiter from an organization who uh, you may want to go work for as a candidate or both? Well, I got to tell you, I, it's both. But the reason I like a staffing agency is because for a staffing agency, they have a lot of different jobs for a lot of different companies. Right. And then if they build a profile on you, they're going to trust me, they're going to want to place the right person with the right client. Right. Because that's that's how we make money. So you I personally, I will go with a staffing agency because they have a larger items or more menu items um, at their fingertips than a corporate recruiter that is only for one specific company. Now, if you want to work for a specific company, fine, go ahead and do that. But if you want to keep your options open and see what else is out there, man, an agency recruiter is the way to go. So there, we we do that too, right? Because we tell our our recruiters go ahead and build relationships. So candidates should be doing the same thing. Yeah, our whole process revolves around that. We're yeah. not we're not just calling and, and trying to build a relationship with someone uh, to fill an open need today. It's to understand 
what that candidate's objectives are and mm-hmm. desires um, and goals so we can uh, build that relationship over time and know when to call them uh, because we've already made that connection. So I, I think um, it makes sense. I, I really like the way you answered it. And I'll say, I think doing both, if, if you know there's an organization you want to work for, work for it, you know, yeah. go, go, go drive uh, that relationship and reach out to recruiters and do, do it in a very personal way. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, I, I think um, I saw some, a TikTok the other day, I think it was, it got a lot of views and the recommendation was to not write a cover letter. Yeah. And then and, and the recruiter was like kind of making fun of cover letters and like, Oh, those, those aren't necessary anymore. You know, boomer, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. <laughs> and I'm thinking what better way, there's no better way to stand out individually than to write a personal note. And in, you can write a handwritten note. Now, how strategic you want to be is, is up to you. But if it were me and I'm answering this to you to the fullest, I would say, write that recruiter a handwritten note. Yep. If it's if it's at the corporate level, it, it express your interest, uh, describe what makes you different. If you if you're not comfortable doing that, send send a, a cover letter, make a phone call, do all of the above. That's really the best thing. You don't you don't want to, yeah. You know, there's a line you don't want to cross in terms yeah. of being overly persistent. But I will say that is so rare that that people will be that proactive and personal in their approach, you you will stand out to a recruiter. At the corporate level on the, uh, um, for, for staffing companies, I agree with you as well. Reach out to the recruiters, build rapport with them, let them know who you are, make a phone call. Yeah. It, I can tell you most can the vast majority of candidates, I'll, I'll this, I'm making up this number, this is not scientific, but I'll say 99% of candidates hit apply, and make no further contact. Um, you know when they see a job posting, and if if I'm giving you know, advice to someone on how to stand out, it's it's well do something that will allow you to stand out. Do something yeah. that others aren't doing, which is making a phone call, writing a letter. Um, these things are very straightforward, but highly effective and really rare. And that's why you'd stand out because very few people are doing it. About 10 years ago, I was recruiting for this organization, and I don't remember the full context of the conversation, but the candidate asked, like, who are you looking for? Like, like, like what kind of skill set are you looking for? The hiring authority says, we're looking for somebody with an explosive personality, something to that effect, right? And, okay, no problem, wrote this, you know, questions down. A week later, we each get a, uh, a personally delivered box with a letter and chocolate inside of it, but the box was a dynamite. It was like a the uh, fake dynamite. The box, it, the old uh, Acme TNT. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like that, kind of like that. But obviously, it was one of those services that you know, like the flowers and um in uh, edible arrangements or whatever. And we opened it, and it was a handwritten letter that says, um, "Thank you very much for your time." And it ha- it, he says something to the effect, um, "You're looking for somebody with an explosive personality, where you got it." And he and he personalized it and. He stood out in our heads, and that's the person who we hired, and he stuck around for eight years. Eight nice. years stuck around. So I love it. The, these are the things you have to do. You've got – because remember, recruiters, hiring authorities, they have a lot of resumes to go through. And then, you, you know, you can't just – yes, yeah, skill set is important, right? We should hire for skill set. Make it easy for the recruiter and the hiring authority to look at your skill set and stand out. But, but you got to be careful. Don't cross that line. I've also received resumes that were doused, and I mean doused in Dracar cologne. I'm like, oh, go look at this away. <laughs> Welcome to the 90s, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he had Dracar cologne everywhere, stunk up the whole office. Some of that can can backfire. So, yeah, don't uh, make sure that when you notice, it's uh, it's helpful for you. And so we can clarify what the line is. Don't show up at their house, right? Don't don't show up <laughs> at the recruiter's office even necessarily uh, without without calling ahead. But make that phone call. It, it, that's yep. that's the the I I, I want to say that's really all it takes. You yeah. you can you can go even further, and I do recommend writing a letter um, and, and sending a note to them that's personal in nature, but. Just a phone call alone will separate you from yep. from the vast, vast majority of, of all candidates out there. That's right. I agree. All right. So what do you do is the next question. Okay. What do you do when a, a recruiter ghosts you? 
that's not the way it was written. It was what I do when a recruiter ghosts me. But what, so what does one do if they're ghosted by a recruiter? So we we constantly are hearing about candidates who who um, who ghost. Yeah, we we know that, and that gets gets a bad rap. Um, but recruiters are known to do it as well, and um, it happens. It happens with frequency, I think. So as a candidate, you know, what do you, what do you recommend? We may we may have differing opinions on this one. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, I because I know we talked before about um ghosting, right? How candidate ghosting recruiters, how that comes from the opposite thing happening years ago, right? And you know, two wrongs don't make a right. So here's here's what advice I would give to a candidate who was ghosted by a recruiter. Never assume they did it on purpose. Never assume they did it on purpose, right? So let's not burn that bridge yet, right? I know it sucks. I know that um it feels horrible being excuse me, being stood up. So I think the best thing you can do, if you're on a Zoom meeting, right, and you're there for five, I would wait 10 minutes. I will wait 10 minutes and see what happens. And if I still don't get anything, I'll shoot them a quick text. If I have their their phone number, their email, I'll shoot them an email and say, hey, I'm here right now. I want to make sure this is still a great time for you. Please let me know if a, dis- if a different time is better. Leave that door open. Right. Even even if they just forgot, even if they're gaffing you off, leave that door open because you don't know if it was a legitimate issue. You don't know if something really did happen because these recruiters are being worked. Right. So sometimes they got meetings back to back to back to back to back and emergencies happen left and right. Candidates, please give them the benefit of the doubt, even if you haven't gotten that be- before from another recruiter for this particular one give them the benefit of the doubt and then see what happens. You knows maybe it was an emergency and now you have a different um, interview happening. But if um, if you start saying, oh, forget you, forget this, you just burn that bridge. So to me, I would give them the benefit of the doubt and just text them to see if there's another time to uh, schedule it. What do you think? Well, I, it shouldn't happen, but we know it does. And yeah. um, the it, it's human nature. We, we don't want to give bad news. We don't want yeah. to. Um, you know, deliver a message that someone doesn't want to hear. And I think that's the vast, I keep saying the same thing. I, th- that's probably why recruiters end up doing it um, most of the time is that they, they just, it's easier to avoid just like candidates who don't want to deliver bad news. I think ghosting is it's, it's, it's a complete lack of courtesy and, and professionalism, but it's because it's easier to, you know, no one likes to deal with the hard stuff. Right. Yeah. So that's mostly why it's why it's going on. And as the candidate, knowing that, uh, if you assume that that's correct, let the recruiter off the hook to some degree just to get the closure and, and the mm-hmm. finality that you want and, and deserve. I, I think it's, it, look, just like a breakup, so to speak. It's not because things are going so well that, that you know, where, when that happens, it's in probably because either the recruiter doesn't have um, – any news to deliver or, or has bad news and, and they find it easier to avoid. Fine. Shouldn't happen, but it does. Uh, send them a message and yeah. you know, try to call, try, try to connect live, try to get the feedback because that's a very important part of the application process. The interviewing process is to get feedback, good or bad, uh, because as a candidate, you you're, you're going to improve your, your chances for the future. You're going to grow as a professional if you get feedback. I mean, if, right. if because you did something that um, caused you to, to get um, passed over or, or to not get a, get an opportunity to continue in the process, you, you want and deserve to know that. Um, but those are the hard conversations. So send a message, you know, via email and, and just acknowledge that, Hey, I, I, I assume that things aren't, you know, aren't, aren't, aren't good. I assume that I'm not going to be moving forward. I'd like to know why I would appreciate knowing why that that's. Yeah. So this is, this, this advice is it's unfortunate that it's necessary to give it this way because that's, but, but that's what I would do now. If you think that you're still in contention for the job or, or believe that um, you're, you're the most qualified and you don't, you want to, I, I say, go down swinging, right. To use a baseball <laughs> analogy. If you want to maximize your, your potential, you can always escalate 
and and go go to the the next person. That's if right. you're at a third party, uh, if you're talking about a third party recruiter um, recruiting firm, there's always someone who is in authority, either a recruiting manager, someone who runs the office at a at a at a at a local or regional level. You can always go to that person and say, "Hey, I just want to know." And and depending on the situation, you you may you may you may want to do that, um, but. I, I think generally speaking, if you if you just send an, a quick note and just say, hey, just take 30 seconds to let me know wh- what happened so I'm yeah. not left in the dark, then um, you know, that's probably the highest uh, percentage w- way you're going to get the answer. And that works both ways too, right? Because now since this is such a candidate's market, candidates have, have a lot of choices, right? If, if you as a candidate already have an interview with company A, but you know, company B just schedule another one for you. But you—that's the company you want to work with. Let candidate A, oh, candidate, uh, um, uh, candidate A, not candidate A, uh, company A. Let company A know. Let them know. Hey, Mr. Mrs. Recruiter, thank you very much for your time. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna participate in this interview. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm gonna go somewhere else. Just let them know. Right. Even if the recruiter wouldn't do that for you, that says a lot about you and your character. And they will re- and the people will remember that. Because let me tell you, I remember whenever a candidate handles a rejection well, because if I tell them I'm not going to give you this job for X, Y reason, I like, thank you very much for your opportunity. I'm like, man, they're supposed to make me feel bad about saying no. And I feel even, <laughs> you know, I feel even worse because they did such a good job with it. You would remember that. So it really does go both ways. And, and on that point, if you are a candidate who has uh, multiple job opportunities you're considering, it is in your interest to share that with the recruiter for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, for, for what you just described, that and one of the other opportunities may come, um, uh, come to fruition. You may end up accepting it. And y- y- you have an opportunity on the front end to not surprise that recruiter yeah. When you end up making the call that you're backing out of of their opportunity, that's okay. It's a natural and normal part of the process, but it always goes so much better if you were open about it in the first place. The other benefit to you as a candidate is that it creates a sense of urgency with the recruiter and and whoever they're recruiting ah. for. Stay and it's and it's 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 an interesting thing, Ricky, where so often we find out as a third party recruiter, the candidate is 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 backing out because they have another, they took another job and, and a new recruiter will be caught off surprise. We caught off guard by that. And, but an experienced recruiter, if they're following our process at least, and, and they're doing it right, they'll really drill into that on the front end to, to, to put everything on the table. Because what, what happens is if, if you're my candidate and I know that you're interviewing elsewhere, first of all, I assume you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's how I, you know, we, our recruiters should go into every conversation. If you're an attractive candidate, if you have a in-demand skill set, if you're someone who we're recruiting, well, you're probably being recruited by others because we we have you know a pretty high standard, a very high yeah. standard when we're recruiting. So I assume that others are interested in you and you're interested in other positions beyond mine. And I would recommend to every job seeker out there, don't put all your eggs in one basket, cast a very wide net. So... I want to set the stage for an open and transparent relationship with you. Hey, Ricky, I assume you're interviewing elsewhere. Um, let me know what's going on with that mm. so I can pass that along to my hiring manager and know what kind of time frame we're dealing with. So if you're only going, if you have a final interview on Friday and you're going to be off the market potentially by then, then I want to set the stage for that in our interviewing and hiring process for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, because I want to create a sense of urgency because I want you as the candidate who's going to get hired, right? I want to be successful in, in my recruiting effort if you're the right person. Um, and number two, I don't want to have to apologize for being sloppy in, in the recruiting process on the other side of that. So I'm going to let the hiring manager know as soon as possible, Ricky's interviewing elsewhere. We have to move quickly. And also, if Ricky ends up taking a job, um, the other another job because we didn't move fast enough, well, then you know I've done my job by communicating that along the way. But I'm only going, I'm only able to do that if I have that transparent conversation with the candidate on the front end. 
Can I throw a curveball to that? So yeah. do you think there is a fear that if a candidate says, hey, by the way, I'm interviewing somewhere else, that the recruiter says, oh, that, then don't even bother here. That's one less person I have to deal with. I'll, I'll tell you, it's a mystery to me because okay. it's always there is a, a tendency for candidates to not share that information, mm -hmm. uh, to, hes to be hesitant in sharing that information. And I've never understood why, because I can continue to list uh, reasons why it's it's in everyone's best interest, including the candidates. Look, if you're a candidate, you want to have as many options as possible. Of course, yeah. Right? Why? I mean, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, but you also don't want to burn bridges. To your point, yeah. you don't want to surprise people when it's when it's avoidable. And and the, and the easiest way to avoid it is just to put it all out on the table. And like I said, if nothing else, it creates a sense of urgency. I mean, if I want, listen, if you know, if you're interviewing me. And you know that no one else is interested, or you think no one else is interested in me. Number one, you may not have to move very quickly, and number two, you may not feel compelled to pay me at the top of 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 the range that you're able to pay. But if you know I'm in hot demand, well, the inverse is true. Now yeah, you're, yeah. you're you're going to get off your butt, and you're going to move quickly, and you're going to you're going to wine and dine me, so to speak, right? You're going to give make me an offer that I can't refuse if you're doing it right. So. For, for candidates, always don't lie, don't make stuff up, but always share with your recruiter where else you're interviewing for, for those reasons. It's in your it's in your interest to do so. You you said something two minutes ago that caught my attention and I try to write it down. You said you don't want to surprise people when avoidable. Yep. That should capsulate this entire episode because that's perfect. You're right. If you know this is something that's going to catch somebody off guard, let them know from the get go. So I like I like that advice. You don't want to surprise people if it's avoidable. I like yeah, it. Well, what's your do you because this is interesting. It's off. It, we're beyond just asking and answering the question, <laughs> but it has been. I've been in staffing a long time, and I've yeah. never been able to fully understand or even in the surface understand why candidates are hesitant to share where else they're interviewing. Um, I think that's it. I think it's fear. I think I think it's the same fear why they don't want to ask for a rate. Um, I think it's the same fear where they don't want to negotiate their pay, right? Because some people are afraid to negotiate pay because they're afraid they might overstep the bounds and say, you know what, forget it. If you don't want this, offer off the table, right? There's a way how to do it. Um, so I think it's that fear. I think the more people practice it and you know what? And here's the thing. Here's the thing. If, if that fear comes true, let's say you're interviewing with somebody, you let them know, Hey, I'm interviewing somewhere else. I'm like, you know what? Forget it. And folks, guess what? They saved you a lot of grief. That's not a company you want to work for then, right? Because if that's how they're going to do it, then, I mean, isn't that a an example on how they deal with things in the organization? So why would you be upset at that? Because they kind of saved you from joining that organization or the possibility to do it, so if that's the case. I, uh, but I can't even draw a line to when that would be a reaction. Yeah, you know, It just doesn't even make sense. So you know, if you're buying a car and, and you go to you know, dealer A and you say, Hey, I'm only looking at this car. Well, they're not going to make you a very good deal, right? Yeah. If you're like, I'm going to buy a car today, I'm going to buy this one no matter what. Okay, yeah. well, they're looking their chops. If you say, well, I'm looking at five other brands and 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 dealerships, and yours is just one, and I'm you know going to take the best offer. Well, now they're motivated at an entirely different level. And while it's not exactly the same thing, of course, it's similar, and, and that mindset is the same. But there's no downside to it. That's that's where I. Uh, come come from, but just be open. I, you know, again, don't make stuff up that it's not real. The in I always encourage candidates to to put all their cards on the table. I always yeah. encourage the recruiters to put all their cards on the table because that's ultimately going to you don't. There's no benefit to fooling someone temporarily in, in this in this um, job search process. You can do it. You, you can, but what, what's the point, right? There's yeah. no, the only ending that's the happy one is where the uh, recruited individual ends up walking in for the job and they are, you know, it, the job represents what they thought it would. Um, they're, you know, it's, it's, it's the opportunity that they wanted and it's one that they're happy to turn down other jobs to take. I mean, you know, you want the stars to all be aligned. Now, that's recruiting when it's done right. And too often there's corners that are cut. Um, mm -hmm. 
on both sides, but it's never about getting the the short term win. It shouldn't be. Yeah. It should always be about getting the long the longer term win because that's really the only win that, that comes in the in the job search and recruiting process. Man, I gotta have you come to my class and just be a guest speaker. Be no, because a lot of the students, a lot of the recruiters that are out there, they need to hear that. They need to hear that piece. A lot of the candidates as well too, um, because that fear cannot be there. You're right. It, it's it just makes no sense not to put everything on the table to let the recruiter know what's going on. And again, if the if the organization says that that I'm going to pass, then that's that what's going to happen regardless. Of course, right. so, and it's yeah. happened to so, me a lot as a, as a third party, where I've said I have this candidate, Ricky, uh, buddies has multiple things going on. So you have to be prepared by Friday to, to make him an offer. And at times the, the, you know, my client in the past would say, well, we can't move that quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you can decide whether to proceed with the interview process, but understand that I now don't have to apologize. If, if Ricky, nor does Ricky have to apologize to me if he ends up being unavailable on, on that day. So it's it's just again it's all it's all about putting it all out there, uh, being transparent, and then and then uh, you know that's just that's just how things should go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. It's so weird that it's it's important or it's necessary to to even say these things because I I think of course we should behave that way. Of course this is what we should do. But it's I guess it's easier said than done. I just don't necessarily know why. I think I think we would help our listeners if a future episode we would role play that how that would look like how one scenario would look like versus another one and how to respond to it if somebody responds negatively so I think that'd be an awesome episode uh, for the next few months what do you think good I'm up for the challenge if you can come up with a negative response to that I I want you to bring it to me and I will um I deal with deal with it Pete <laughs> negative responses is my middle name I can easily come up with that. <laughs> So. All right, good. Well, I know you like putting me on the spot, so we'll um we'll, we'll do we'll do that then. Yes, sir. We will I do like that. It. Excellent. All right. Well, they, there's our questions for today. Keep them coming. Anything's on the table. We, we if you are interested in wondering how recruiters think and act behind the scenes, if you're looking to have more clarity on what companies um go through in their hiring process, you want to know how to stand out or get ahead as a candidate or job seeker, please email us questions at zengig.com. Questions at zengig.com will get to us. We will address it. We love the Q&A. We don't get enough of it, um, yes. but it's you know, the, the harder questions, the better. And we um, will tell you what you need to hear. May not always be what you want to hear, but we'll tell you what you need to what hear. What you need to hear. That's right. That's, That's right. It. Excellent. All right, everyone, thanks for listening today. Drive safe out there. Rate and review Finding Careers In. We would love um, that. And again, let us know uh, what's on your mind because we want to hear from you. Ricky, That's thanks right. so much. Thank you, sir. Have a good one, folks. Drive safe. Bye. Um.